sometimes if the money we have to be honest if you are playing for a smaller club mm -hmm. right and you haven't made really good money you can't be saying i'm depending on football only because mm -hmm. that money is not enough to sustain you as well you understand Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Mr. Beast Mkwanazi. How are you, bro? I'm good, thank you. How are you, brother? I'm fantastic, man. Um, quite a different episode for our viewers because we've never had somebody who is in the fraternity of sports. So it will be quite interesting for both you and for us and, and everybody who consumes this content. Um, sports is something that people around the world love. It uh, unites communities, it, it breaks away our religious differences, it breaks away our racial differences, our language differences, and we all can just find common ground and be happy when, when we are united and enjoying and watching sports. But you on the other side, as a pro footballer, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Um, firstly, I think the most reason why I do what I do uh, it's because of the love that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, but also, um, there's other, like, reasons. You know, um, when you try to get into, like, more personal side of it, I feel like it's something that I, I figured it out that I can only be able to um, make a living out of, you mm -hmm. know, because it's something that I think I am talented on. So I'm trying to make use of that mm. while I can, you know. So um, take care of my family and mm. everything. I think that's also the most important reasons why I do this, you know. But wh why, why not do the normal routes that we all do? I mean, I, I'm assuming you come from the township like many of us. Um, every one of us in this room, even the people behind the scenes, we come from the township, we come from humble beginnings. Um, our parents tell us to go to school. Why football specifically? I know you said you love it, but why do you think when would football can actually change my family's life? What is it, is it that you saw maybe from others in football that you saw? Would, there is, is success. Yes. Oh, I would say firstly, at the beginning, when I was still going to school, like primary school, I think I, until I go to, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. um, secondary school, um, I joined a football academy. Yeah. Uh, and then when I joined a football academy called the, the Stars of Africa Football Academy, <coughs> Can I just have some water? Sure, that helps. Something on my throat. Yeah, when I... Stars of Stars Africa. of Africa? Yeah. Uh, Farouk Khan. I joined them. Um, and then when I got there, I just saw, like, how things were happening for everyone. Like, we all come from townships. Some are coming from Devon, some are coming from Northwest. We all just there, staying together, just want to pursue the dream. And you just see kids going from their street to Europe abroad. So that opened my eyes, yeah. you know, and be like, I also want to be like these guys, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, that's where the motivation came from. Yes. Like, took Gila Ranti, May Mashangu, all of them in front of my eyes, you yeah. know, we're just sharing like the same room and yeah 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 now the next thing they are gone the other one in sweden portugal they are trying to make to make it there and mm -hmm. they made it you know so that's where the actually the real motivation came from for me what is your home situation <coughs> at the time 
Um, do you come from a family where you have a mom and a dad who are married? Do you come from a single mom, a single dad? Are they divorced? Um, once again, who is, who is there for you to say, okay, let's help nurture this dream? Oh, um, yeah, um, come from a family where uh, I stayed with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're still together even now. Um, Miracle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah blessed. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was my dad, you know, who said, because uh, I remember when um, they said I must come mm -hmm. train with them. Uh, that time I went for like a few weeks. They had to decide how they look at me, am I really, am I ready enough to play for the academy to cause you get a scholarship and everything. Okay, yeah. So, and then they're like, okay, cool. And the next year, you need to join us. Um, so, the, wait, so the scholarship is to still remain in South Africa or is it taking you overseas? No, the scholarship is, is taking you to the academy first. Okay. So they pay for everything. Okay. Your schooling and everything, the yeah. academy does yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, but you need to be at a certain level, level for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So you first go for an assessment, then they tell you, okay, we can bring you in. Yeah. So my dad used to take me to training and traveling all the time now yeah. and then, you know. Um, then until they made a decision that in the following year, we think you must come join us. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, then... My mom was just a little bit against it at that time because my brother played football, uh, but he didn't really, you know, make it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, my mom, you know, she had this thing. If that you football go, doesn't really take you far, really take you far. Yeah, you must yeah. focus on school. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're just gonna lack on school if mm. you focus on football sure, too much. Sure. But my dad was just was just like, no, try your luck, you know. Do you, think your, do you think your dad believed in football because he had seen others become successful? Or maybe just as a man, he, he, he was living his dream through you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he believed in football because he has seen others, uh, you know, becoming successful because he also had a football club before, um, like in the local township. So, okay. Skarango Bese was one of them. Oh, wow. Play. Yeah. When he was playing for the Chiefs Development, yeah. he used to come play in the local with in my father's mm -hmm. team. So, he just loved football and he, he saw it, you know, he experienced that with his eyes, seeing young kids, you know, making it out. And he was like, okay, I think you have a chance, you know, just try and see how far you can go. You know, and we just gonna take it from there. But you have my support, and yeah, it's, it's but it's not all rosy when it comes to football, especially in Europe. Um, we've had many stories of young kids being taken by these big foot football clubs, um, by all the big leagues being trained, and they actually become commodities of the club, where the club wants to take you in as young as possible put you in some sort of training and academy only for them to make a share every time you transfer from team to team to team to team. And essentially what that does is that parents actually lose their child to this club. And it's like you leave home and never, ever come back. How has been your experience in terms of when you first left South Africa and went to Europe? Have you ever felt like, eh, maybe I should have stayed at home and tried to play for the PSL? Yes, yes, yes. It it happens yeah. uh, a lot, you know. Uh, especially the first the first year, which is it was very it was very hectic, you know, because there's just a lot of things. You're new to the environment. You're new to just everything. Um, some days, because you're also alone, mm -hmm. uh, you stay alone at your apartment. You there's days where you overthink, mm, you know, mm, mm. and you try to think maybe maybe I should have stayed at home. Maybe I should have played for this club and this mm. club, you know, because um, you, you, there's a lot of challenges that you come, you come across, you know, and I think you need to just be really, really strong mentally to go through, to go through that, you know. The first six months, I wanted to come home. Was it terrible? Um, it, was, it was really hectic. I, f I think I was excited mm -hmm. at first. Initially, when, yeah. Initially, when I left the country. Yeah. First three months, I'm happy. Yeah. It's a new environment and everything is okay. Um, but as the time goes, you know, it starts to, to become a little bit... What is hectic? Take us in. What is hectic? Like, is it language barrier? Just take us in. I think with the culture, the language, yeah. the food... Um, you know, and the food is ugly. 
Yeah, it's <laughs> not, as, not as nice as what's on the phone. Yeah. You know, and um, you also have the the weather on itself. Mm-hmm. You need to get used to that because by the time, that time I went, it was it was January. So mm-hmm. it's winter, it's very cold. It's snowing. Um, there's no sun, you know. Um, you only, you'll only see the sun probably in May, mm-hmm. you know. So now... It's it's just gets dark very early, three p.m. in the afternoon. It's dark. It's uh, like it's nine p.m. Are you made to feel black? Am I what? Are you made to feel black? Because you're in a very European environment. Do you feel like ish? I'm black here, and in South Africa, I didn't feel this black. Yeah. I feel blacker here. Yeah, 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 yeah. To a certain extent, you do because when you sometimes even ask for somehow people are not as friendly as yeah, yeah. you understand. You might ask for like a little bit of directions. Where can I go? I'm looking for this. Someone will just look at you and not even say anything. You just walk in a restaurant or whatever. Just people are minding their own business. They don't talk to you on a train. You know? Uh, but lucky enough, in, 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 in the club that I was playing for, that time I, we had two Ghanaian boys. Mm-hmm. So they've been very long you know, in Europe. So uh, they made me feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, was the, the other guy was a little bit older than me, so he was like a senior player. So when I'm experiencing these challenges and everything, I'll go to him, hey, this is how I feel. This is how it is, you know. He'll speak to me, no, this and this and this and this, you know. Sometimes go to his apartment, you know, just to chill a bit mm-hmm. with him so I can, my mind can just recover a little bit or be away from a lot of stuff, you know, overthinking and all of that but yeah you do go through that you know it's not people are not as friendly as they are south africans are yeah, really friendly yeah, you know you can yeah. meet someone you don't know today hey how are you hey well everything you guys can start a conversation but it's not like that it's interesting to me that you say um that a Ghanaian two Ghanaian brothers became your refuge because ordinarily in South Africa, we are perceived to not get along with people from other African countries. But the truth is, essentially, we are all African. And we realize the importance of unity as Africans when we go to the rest of the world. Because the rest of the world doesn't like Africans. It's, it's just a fact that the rest of the world profiles Africans. They are classist towards Africans. <clears throat> and no matter how great you can be in what you do, they may respect you in certain spaces where they will give you that respect so it's okay maybe you're good at this scale or maybe you just did a did hit on the field you just scored a goal or you pulled a good move they'll respect you for that 10 minutes but it's back to normal programming when we're back at home when we're on the streets where you are other people who maybe don't know you um that you play for this team uh so i i guess that the, the Euro- european experience isn't as great as, as, as it, it is perceived to be, would you say now it has changed in a way or you've just learned to tolerate it? I don't think it has, it has changed. I've, I think I just have learned to tolerate it and accept the situation. But mm-hmm. like you said, it's not as great as people look at it. Do you still feel lonely? Um, some days, yes. Um, but I've managed to make, to just to make a few friends mm-hmm. around African, you know, mm-hmm. um, they're just in different cities, though, you know, um, quite like four hours away. But we do meet now and then, you know, when I'm free, when they have time, you know. So I think that helps me a lot. But some days you just come back from training and come back from training, finish training, and you have the whole day, probably watch series. Mm. You you wouldn't go much you wouldn't go out as much as you would when you're in South Africa because there you're like I'm alone. Mm-hmm. What am mm-hmm. I going to do there mm-hmm. alone? You know, so you don't get that. You know, it's, it's better when you have someone around. You know. Would you say that loneliness has affected your self-esteem? To a certain a certain point, I would say because um, it gets it, even with. Like your confidence and everything just happens. It's just not the same. You know, you feel like it's, you are not yourself anymore. You know, you're just slowly trying to, slowly losing yourself, you know, because there's certain things that you know you don't do. But at that point, 
you just started to pick up some habits that you do and mm -hmm. it's just because when i'm here i wouldn't do that because there's a lot of things i can do and i don't feel like that but when i'm there now the mind is just thinking a lot now you start to pick up a little bit of habits things that you never did before you, you do that you know it's like you're not functioning mm -hmm. really really well is success worth the loneliness Difficult question to answer, but I would, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely yes. Um, I think it is. I think it is, but it depends on how everyone um, looks at it, you know. And you might. I'm not saying <coughs> everyone. It's okay to be to be lonely you know, and feel like that all the time. It depends how everyone really views, at, views it, you know. Um, it might work out for me, it might not work out for someone else, you know. Someone else might be a little bit lucky to go through that and uh, God willingly, he makes it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for some, we'll be like, I'm here alone, I'm going through stress, it's a lot of things. And then the results are just not there. Yeah, would you say it's worth it? You wouldn't say it's Yeah, so, yeah. You understand? So I think what I've learned is also it's difficult to to judge um to judge something if we don't have the results yet. But we also don't know you might make the right decision, right? And and then only to find out that the results are, are, are negative. Yes, yes. But it was the right decision to make at that time, mm -hmm. you know. And probably you might make a bad decision and it might work out for you. The results might be positive. So it's really difficult to judge at the, like, as at the moment to say, is it really wanna? A workout or not, because we we don't know, you understand. We're just hoping that okay, it really it really works out, you know. But not every time, a good decision brings out good results, and not every time a negative decision brings out bad results. Bad results. Yeah, yeah. You speak of adopting habits that are caused by loneliness, particularly habits that you wouldn't ordinarily if you were in johannesburg or if you were in south africa or if you were home have adopted what type of habits does one adopt that are caused by loneliness i think for me what i started because <clears throat> uh what i started doing was um probably at night you know uh it's time to to sleep at that time but i'll be up or walk alone in the street you know, just take a walk. I know it's very safe, but that is something I don't usually do. And uh, sleeping patterns also is not, it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll probably sleep 4 a.m. in the morning every day. Um, you just start um, doing, like, very weird things, you know, uh, like... When you're going, before you go to like a match or anything like that, you know, at that time I used to, there's something that I used to, I used to, I used to um, of take, you know, just just so that I don't get too lonely at that time. I did sometimes when I come back from training and we're like, I'm, I've never been an alcohol whole person in my mm -hmm, life mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. my mom knows i've never touched alcohol mm -hmm. but i think when i got there that's when i started experiencing the yes. taste of the alcohol. alcohol yeah yeah because now I'm, I'm 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 just there alone i have nothing much to do but now you you, you start doing things that are yeah. just this is not out you, of character out of character yeah this is really not you you know that's that that was the first time i didn't try to um started you know tasting alcohol with it which is was i was like okay let me just buy wine mm, you mm, know mm. but you start like that you know 
because I've never in my life my mom my parents they know that yeah you know, yeah it's yeah. not my thing has it been a positive journey with alcohol though or are you at a point where it, it's so tough to be alone because I, I, i'll go back to the question that i asked is is the success worth it where there is money there's trials and tribulations there is the prestige where people know Uguti, you are overseas in a nice country where people perceive that you are making a lot of money um you will tell us whether that's true or not and is it, now you're adopting all these habits i always say for a person who's never started drinking i don't recommend that they start at all um are you at a point in your life where you're like sure I've, I've sacrificed so much of the for the success that i've lost myself to the point that i'm now a person who drinks so much um <clears throat> i think with uh, our call journey it hasn't been really really hectic mm -hmm. hasn't been really bad you know um it was just now and then you know i didn't become like a really really an alcoholic okay yes it's just a thing of once in a week there and there you know but it's something that i never touched you know so um now i'm just now that i'm back here it's something that i'm like i don't even try to think of you understand because i'm i'm feeling better you know sometimes you know you see family and you see friends you see friends yeah so it much and uh, it's, it's just a little bit really really better you know i i didn't get into it too much have you not lost your friends because sometimes when we we, 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 we go away chasing our greatness um, we climb so high, we climb up the ladder so high, and that causes us to be secluded so much. Right now you're in South Africa, you're in Johannesburg, you're home for, for a few weeks, and I'm sure you come back and people's lives have moved on completely. People are doing their own things. Are you not finding it difficult to reintegrate into society while you're here? Yeah, it's really, really difficult. It's really difficult because um, everyone is just focusing on whatever they're doing, and because you haven't spent so much time yeah. here. So now when you come back, you're like, someone is busy with this, someone is busy with this. So you don't really have time to, to, to even see them, you know? Uh, you try to reach out, but probably they even made new friends. Of course, time, of course. You know? So now it's a little bit, it's really, really difficult. Now you have to see um, who you can, you can chill with or who you can do stuff with you know but uh what i do is because you know as footballers we know each other so i just reach out to the to the football so sure, sure. can chill but the real friends that i really grew up with and all that ah, they've moved on they've moved on yes speaking of footballers um i want to juxtapose your european experience with the south african experience so you've never played football in south africa or you did briefly? I did briefly. Yeah. And what did you play for when you were playing um, in South Africa? I played in the in the uh, NFD. It was Cape Town All-Stars at that time. Yes. No, yes. Okay. So, and in that experience, when you look at your friends in football now who are playing in the PSL, do you ever look at their lives and you are like, maybe I should have stayed in the PSL? I... Uh, because their lives look glamorous. Not all of them, but so many people's lives look glamorous on social media. They're dating celebrity women. It's the new thing to do. <laughs> uh, do you ever look at their life and be like, hey, maybe I'd be a superstar Yaga Keiza Chiefs right now? Yeah, some, some days. Yeah. Some days, yeah. Yeah, you truly some days. Um, but also, because you get to speak to them personally. And you know the realities of what you know, they go through. So they will tell you what they are going through and we'll share, you mm, understand? Mm. And then you'll be like, okay, maybe I might be in a better situation. But they'll tell you a lot of things, though. You know, um, every home has its own problems. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when I know, because I know them personally, we'll share a lot of stuff we share. Then, you know, I share with them. Then from there, you'll be able to pick up that okay he might be they might be going through a lot there and there there and there but some sometimes you do i do i do really you know have that get that feeling of maybe i should have you know maybe things would have worked out differently because um in 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 
going to Europe when you are not yet established. Yeah. If I take, for example, let's say Benkosi Lodge, mm. um, going to Europe at the level that is he's at now, you know, now, yeah, um, and take a young boy who hasn't played much, you know, still trying to make his name. Yeah. Loch has made his name in South Africa. So when he goes there, they already know Loch is... Sure. You are going as... On, you're on zero. Mm, 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 mm. I hear you. So now look at the steps that you have to take you to have get to, take. to that level. It's true, 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 true. So it's really, it's really difficult yeah, that yeah. you have to go. And you can't just... Maybe by luck, you can't just go from zero... You playing at the highest, highest level. Sure. You have to be somewhere in between. Yeah. Then you try to try all the to smaller land. leagues and keep climbing you and keep, keep climbing. climbing. Yeah. If it works out for you, yes. But if it doesn't, but it's difficult as well. You know, it it really needs also. To, it, it depends on also always taking care of you. Yeah. Like the agent, you know, because they also play a big role, especially in Europe. You know, they have, they have a say. Mm -hmm. They really do have a say. Why do so many South African footballers, pro footballers in South Africa yeah. who play for the PSL for years and years and years and years get into their forties and they become poor? Yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have like the correct answer for that, but uh, I think it's just a matter of what you do uh, while you're still making, mm -hmm. you know, the the money that you have because. I don't think you're going to make it forever, mm -hmm. you know. At certain point, you're going to get to an age. Our, 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 like, wages or salaries, they never remain, like, the same. They always change. Even, mm -hmm. like, in two years, you can find yourself on this amount. In the next year, you find yourself on another amount. So it's really also difficult to plan outside football sometimes mm -hmm. because... You don't know, okay, if this contract ends and I was earning this much, the next one, it's either I might go up or I might go less. If I haven't really played much mm -hmm. or no one has that interest, probably I might go down. You know, so um, I will say while you're still playing to try and um, put a little bit aside whatever you can and, you know, but I, I think they don't sometimes get the right advice. That's why they end up in mm -hmm. that situation because they do make probably good money, you know, and just happens that they spend it, some spend it recklessly and they don't think about, okay, tomorrow I might not play anymore, you know, or I don't know what might happen to me, but, you know, I think it's just a matter of finding the right people and um, let them, you know, guide you and advise you in the right way in what to do, you know, also on the side and all that because um, I think football is, uh, when you look at it, you know, I was telling one boy, you know, in Europe, sometimes if the money, we have to be honest, if you are playing for a smaller club, mm -hmm. right, and you haven't made really good money, you can't be saying I'm depending on football only because mm -hmm. that money is not enough to sustain you as well, you understand? I'm making an example of you play for a small club, they're paying you a good 25,000, 30,000 rands, mm -hmm. which is okay, fine, you know? But I feel like with how life is, it's really expensive now, you know? If it gives you, if you have, because we do have time, you know, just start something also on the side. That's even if it doesn't make a lot of money by that time, but at least you get something out of, out of mm -hmm. what you do on the side because... You might, you know, you never know that you really want to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you might, your highest you you can get, you maybe it can be for your rest, your your whole life. Someone else, sure, there, someone else, if they really made it big, you know, they they of course make millions. You understand, but not not everyone will make it big. True, of course. That's why we only know of a few names. Of a few names. Yeah. You know, yeah, we know because they will tell you, oh, this one, he played football before. Okay, he played football, but we don't know him because they didn't make it big. Yeah. And did he make a lot of money of football? We don't know. Mm. That might be 
maybe he didn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, chances yeah. are he didn't. So, um, while you can and you know try to 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 find something on the side and you know try to make a living as well out of it. That's interesting because so many of us have this perception that footballers are making a killing. Yeah. Um, we think when you have a footballers, as, as I said, the footballers nowadays um, are dating baddies. Yeah. They are dating <laughs> celebrities. They are funding the baddies' lifestyles. Uh, they buying baddies brand new cars, SUVs that uh, take years to 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 accomplish for many people. Uh, you'll find a footballer buying a, a baddie a Range Rover at the age of twenty five, and you're like, my goodness, this is insane. This is a car that takes some people their whole lifetime, or they never even achieve before they die. But you're saying to me, there is not as much money as we believe there is, especially as a South African. So there is also a level of living beyond their means that footballers do so that they seem cool, so that they date the best people yeah, or that they accomplish, uh, they accomplish the best followers. Where do you think that culture comes from? Yeah, I think, I think, I really think it comes with, with pressure as well. Okay. Yes. Um, now we see Long Yellow, we see him on TV all the time. Yeah. He's playing for one of the biggest clubs. Uh, when people look at you, they look at you different. Now, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So now you have this thing in your mind. I have to try and match up with that, you know, and keep up with that level, how they look at me and how I live my life, you know. So it's really unnecessary pressure. And then you find a lot of us put ourselves in situations that are really difficult, that um, we're just living beyond our sorry our means you know or like we just try to do too much mm -hmm. which is something that is really unnecessary so i think it really really does come with a lot of pressure especially when people are starting to see on that tv screen mm, mm, mm. now there's a lot of expectations you now you can't drive a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> you have to drive a big car. A GTI. A GTI. <laughs> yeah, now you can't see you with this lady. You have to see you because now you're you 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 see you're a star you're now. A star. So you need to have a star next to you. Have to, yeah, yes, you no? know. So <laughs> it creates a lot of a lot of pressure, I must say. So yeah. maybe not being in South Africa is being a blessing for you in disguise, because you can make your mistakes and go through your flops in private. Yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? I understand. Like, you can have bad days and nobody would know. Very true. Gandhi, if Very you were true. in the PSL, you have a bad day. I, it's, on, it's on the tabloids. It's on my pepper and dava. It's on Instagram. It's, it's everywhere. On every <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's Who do you pray to? Who I pray to? Mm. I pray to God. Mm. And um, I acknowledge my sisters too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you usually say to God? Um, how has God been your anchor in, in this whole journey? Because it doesn't seem like it's been an easy one. Um, I think he has, he, has, he has been good so far. But, um, of course, you, like you say, you go through challenges and all of that. Uh, sometimes you question it. Mm, true. You, you know, you question him. Sometimes you, get, you do get frustrated. And when you do, um, when you're doing so well, I feel like, you know, when everything is good, it's so easy, like, you know, because you, everything is good, your mm -hmm. mental health and everything, it's so easy to just keep on, like, praying and praying. To, but when, it, when it's, things are just a little bit, they get tough and difficult, you, you even start, you, you start praying less. You know, I don't know if it's it's something that's it's it me mm -hmm. or is is it is it does everyone go through that? You know, but uh, I think yeah, you do question him a lot some in some situations, and when you get frustrated. But you know, uh, at the end of the day, I think he's he's he knows what what's best for you. You know, you just have to keep going and. Um, this is going to take you to the right direction, you know, we put all the faith and our hopes in you. so. Would you say spirituality is important for you as a footballer right now where you are in your life? Or do you think that 
spirituality is just important for everyone and the reason it, you, you build, act, rather just explain first why do you think spirituality is important for you and where you are in this season of your life right now uh, i think it's, it's 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 important for me because um to where i'm trying to go to where i'm trying to get you know i think i need to be really uh, close to God and close to my ancestors too, you know, because I think uh, I can do the job, you know, I can push as much as I can, mm -hmm. you know, but only he can take me so far. So it's really important to have that relationship with him, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. go back and ask him, you know, f all the time and, you know, just keep on asking for strength even th when it gets tough, you know. To, for him to give you that extra, you know, because alone it really gets difficult, you know, if you're trying to do it alone, you know, you, 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 can, you can, but he, he's the provider of everything. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You speak about, you speak about your mom, your dad, um, how they've been present for you, especially how your dad has supported you in the journey of, of where you are right now. But as a person who has moved to Europe, and has had to meet people from different countries. How is your journey in trying to build your own family going? Um, it's been going quite... Uh, it was okay at first. Mm -hmm. um, because at that time I had a, I had a partner. Mm -hmm. But through the distance and everything... So she was in South Africa? Yes. Uh -huh. It really got tough. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Then uh, from there, we just decided that things are just not working out. Mm -hmm. And um, you just have to try to move on with your life. But uh, at that time, you know, I really, because of how we're close and how the bond and the connection was, my idea of whole thing, but you, you, that's why it's important to have uh, someone that really... Um, you guys are on the same page, you know, mm -hmm. you guys want, because I can say to you, I want to be in Europe and I want to pursue my career in Europe, but are you willing to leave South Africa and come with, come me. with me? Yeah. And if someone is not willing to do that, I don't think you can just force it, mm -hmm. you know, into them. So that was one of the also main reasons why it didn't, because... She's probably busy with her life as well. Someone is busy with her stuff. So now I must leave everything that I'm doing, sacrifice everything just to support your to dream. To support your dream. Yeah. You understand? What about me? So really didn't work Do you out. think it was a fair decision on her part to choose herself instead of choosing to support <laughs> your dream? Uh, when I think about it now, I think at that time I was sad about it, yeah. you know? Uh, but I think it was it was really quite a fair decision. At uh, you know when I really tried to think about it again, you know I think you just have to always really choose yourself, you know, in this life. And uh, she has also goals and dreams that she wants to achieve as well as individual. So uh, I think it's quite fair that she she goes on with that. Footballers are known, no, are known rather to not respect the units of family. Um, and you speak to me as if you are, you, you're a victim of a situation where you were trying to build a family and because of the distance, it didn't work out. Are you truly in a place right now where you would want to build a family again, even in Europe? Or are you waiting to come back to South Africa somehow? Like, where's your mentality around that? Um... I think my mentality right now is at I just need to um, figure out where I'm gonna be. If I'm gonna be here, yes, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to you know, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but I think with the experience I had with her, um, it has decreased a little bit of hope or it decreased sure. a little bit of my my expectations or how I view things in mm -hmm. terms of do I want to have that again, mm -hmm. you understand? Hence, it's difficult for me, even at this point in time, to 
be in a cold serious relationship because i'm like what's really the gonna be the point of this if it's not gonna like go on does know? family matter to you it really does does it matter a lot? a lot a lot because i come from a family where we like i said my mom and dad they've been together for very long since i was a kid and seeing them all the time and now they are old they're close to 60 you know and you which, can't build that yes i can't build that that's what i want for myself to you understand i'll repeat my question is success worth it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really it's a difficult one to be honest man yeah it's it's really difficult you know because uh, just to take you a little bit in the situation that we had with her it, it's 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 how can i put it um you can come back you know, to South Africa, and then it's easy, I'm here, you are here, and then, you know, um, life is a little bit easy, we can build a family, we can, you know, uh, but at that time, did I really want to do that? It wasn't in my mind at that time, I wasn't thinking of it, you know, so I also looked at it at the it, the way I view that it was like, must I sacrifice or must I put my dreams and goals aside <laughs> for her? <laughs> and what happens if things don't work out and <laughs> if she leaves me? <laughs> I've done that before. And I was like, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was because it was a really hectic and very difficult situation, you know, yes. So it's a really, you find yourself in, in a very, very difficult position where you need to make such decisions and, you know. You've sacrificed your career before for a partner. I wouldn't put it that way, but when, we, when you and I are speaking right now, we can have an agreement, you know, and we can speak and be like, okay, cool. This is how we're going to work things out, right? Um... What must I say if you agree to that? And then five months down the line, you change your mind about it. I've or you, I, I changed my mind about it. You've already made a decision that okay, it's cool. I'm going with what you said. We both agree. What individual changed their mind? Yeah. And then, how do you feel? I I felt like that, you know, because we had a conversation. It was, okay, cool, this is how it's going to go. We do it, right? Um, time goes by. Uh, someone changes her mind about the whole thing and how everything goes, you know. It's, it's, then it's, 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 for you, it's like, why did I make this decision, you know? Did I really neglect everything for this, you know? It, it really didn't switch well with me at that time. You know, so yeah. I want to move on once again, bring you back to South Africa and the level of success that some footballers have, have made, the money they've made, the cars they've driven, um, the longevity of their careers. You spoke to me earlier about having faith in God and also having faith in your ancestors. Do you believe people use their ancestors or rather... Um, manipulation of their ancestors in the form of witchcraft to amass this success as South African footballers. Do you like when you speak to your peers and your friends here in South Africa? Are there people you don't have to tell me the names where you're like, you, you we all know so and so is, is successful because of? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think it's something that is there, you know, it's just that, um, of course, people wouldn't do it in your like in your presence mm -hmm. or you, you know they wouldn't allow you to see that but it's something that is there um you see people do different things you know someone is doing this someone is 
they gave him this, you know? Is this in the change room? Like, there are things you see in the change room that people will consume or <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, but we, maybe some... Uh, your body lotion is different to ours, you know? There's something inside that you, I'm not allowed to use it. I, I hear you. Yes, yeah, so, like, for example, we're in the change room, like, hey, Vesu, can I have some lotion? Like, no. No, no, you can't yeah. use it, you know? You can't use this one. So... They, those things are there. They exist. <laughs> they, they put things in body lotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. You know, uh, you can't use it. Only he's only allowed to use that. Yeah. You know. Um. So, those things they do. Exist. Things like what? Like, <laughs> what is in body lotion that's different that I can't use your body lotion? I wouldn't know what it is, right? Yeah. Because it's there, it's mixed. Okay. So, but you, you can tell that there's something like black stuff, whatever oh, inside and yeah. all of that. You understand? So, you also wouldn't want to use that because you're not sure, is this going to harm me? Or mm, mm, you, mm, you, mm, you know? So, you're just like, I, no, it's fine. I understand. Do players use it to become successful themselves or do they sometimes use it to bring down other players in their team? Um... I think mostly, you know, uh, people use it uh, for them, you understand, to become more successful, mm. you know. Um, it will be very, a few number maybe of people who can, who, can, who can say, I'm doing this to just destroy someone else, you know. And we always say, you know, we don't have a problem much. You 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 put on your body, on yourself you yeah on yourself as long as it's 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 works for you and it's for you you understand yeah it's not to harm someone else then that's perfectly fine you can you can use it as much as you can you know it's it's okay as long as you're not bringing something that will just to destroy someone or to just yeah you know if it's for you then it's all good have you ever felt like your talent is a burden. Yeah. Yeah, it felt. Yeah. Yeah. And why would you say that? Like, what was going through your mind when it felt like a burden? Like, what what was so painful about being talented that it felt like a burden? It just the things that you have to carry. They sometimes become so much. Mm -hmm. You know that. Do you still want to do this? Mm. You know. Um. At some point, I was like. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I haven't reached the age of like retirement or anything like that. But I feel like it's it, now it's so much that I'm, I'm thinking of do I really want to continue with this? Mm. If I don't continue, okay, what can I do? You know? Um, because it comes with a lot, you know? He, 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 then you have a lot of responsibility as well. And people also don't understand when, because you have, like you said, you. You are a professional footballer, and you, you, you they don't they don't think you are a human too. You understand? So they can't if you say you can't do something, or there's something you cannot do for them. It's like you expected to do to, to save everyone. Yeah, it's impossible, you know, because everyone is just becoming your responsibility, mm. and it's a very it's heavy on your shoulders. Yeah, it's can't a burden. Carry, it's a burden. Yeah. You really can't carry it for that long, you know. So, it, sometimes, of course, you know, you do go through that and um, I would say definitely. Do you think if you were not a footballer, what would you be? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll be something in the law, maybe a lawyer or something. Mm, mm. Yeah, because that's what I wanted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, when I was still growing up as a kid, you know, until like, I saw the other side of football, then, yeah, it just took me over. We, we're nearing the end of our conversation. Um, I think one thing that has been insightful about this conversation is that just because you are in Europe, it doesn't mean that everything is glitz, everything is glamorous. And there is a side to success that we don't often speak about, about how lonely success is. 
um, how climbing this ladder, getting into this lift, chasing the dream uh, means you lose people, you lose relationships, uh, you might even lose your culture because you have to assimilate into a culture of a different country and you have to change who you are, you have to sustain racial profiling from other people. Um, last but not least, um, what's the one thing that Beast Mkwanazi believes in in life and says, this thing I know for sure? Um, as in, like, my career. Just, what's that one thing in life where when you think about this thing, you absolutely believe in it? Like, you know it for sure, and it's, it's maybe something that you live by, and, yeah, you trust in it so much. Uh, I think... Uh, they can, you know, um, firstly, I think to, <clears throat> just to cut it short, you know, they can never take what you have, you know, what God gave you, it's yeah. yours, you know, nobody can take it away, you know, so, and also to how much is given, I think much is required, <laughs> um, yeah. I can never ask for so much from someone if you can't give me that. Mm. You know, it's because I have that, you know. So, uh, in all, like, it's just it's just you being you and doing yourself. Um, you know, challenges will come now and then. and uh, But what I try to live by, you know, um, every day is that the storm eventually ends. And when it ends, you got to be prepared, mm. you know, got to be ready for it. You know, it eventually ends. I don't, I don't know how long it takes, but definitely it ends, you know, and just carry on, like, put one foot in front of the other. Just keep going. And hopefully, you know, one day, things will, everything will make sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, um it can it, it it doesn't take doesn't take doesn't take it doesn't take a day you know it never takes you know i think it requires a lot of a lot of patience a lot of sacrifice a lot of sacrifice and perseverance is one of the most most underrated word people i think people like don't uh value you know so for me i think Perseverance. Just persevere. Lungisi, Peace Mkwanazi, from Johannesburg to Poland to <laughs> Netherlands to the world. We thank you for your time, brother. Thank you for making time for us while you're still in Johannesburg. And we really, really wish you a successful career on this platform. And hopefully we'll see you soon and you'll be bigger, greater, <laughs> and just changing the world. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.